the apocalypse is coming. Regardless of what cable television news show you watch or election season or bridges falling down in Philadelphia, I can tell you definitively the apocalypse is coming because it is June 11th and there is no humidity, none whatsoever. I've lived south of the Mason-Dixon line for well over a decade now, and I can't remember a time when you walked outside in June and didn't need a sweat rag, the twins weren't completely bathed in baby powder, and I'm not complaining, but to me, there's no sure sign that the uh, end of days is well on its way. This isn't exactly a new development. A uh, couple months back, we were dealing with lower than normal rain levels, and I'm not exactly an expert on how aquifers work. The house works on a well. So I had a bit of non-malice aforethought, thought about capturing rain to fill up some IVC toads for agricultural use, watering the birds, watering the garden. So the root cause of all of this non-rain is, it's my fault, because I went ahead and put the effort in to, uh, to install these. Anyway, I digress. So I was initially thinking about punching in a shallow well here, but in an effort to not make every single video that the Kelly's Country Life guy does, man, he uploads a lot. I went with the easier route, where we have running water on the property, oh, about 500 feet that way, and I just pump water up into the IBC totes. And for the last month or so, it has worked absolutely perfectly. I have very little complaints. Notice I didn't say zero complaints. My only complaint is the water gets a little funky. I don't use that much. I use about 100 gallons a day. This is a 500 gallon setup. I have, two, I have a 275 and a 330 teed in across to each other. Not exactly earth shattering or splitting the atom here. And that physical setup works great. Also, if you notice, despite I'm wearing sunglasses, there's no sun back here. So one of those wrapper things that goes around the IBC totes to prevent al algae growth uh, from sunlight wouldn't actually do anything because there's very little to no sunlight back here. So since this is drinking water for the birds and I'm spraying my garden down with it, the idea of just oversaturating it with a bunch of chlorine to prevent algal growth, eh, kind of self-defeating, doesn't really work. My first thought, and some people are gonna laugh when they see this, is was filtering it. It's the natural, uh, natural thought. So I went ahead and I bought this 22 by four inch filter. I was gonna plumb it in on the output so I could clean the water going out to its final destination. And here's my issue. The filters for this thing, are $125 a piece. And with the turbidity and the dirt and the filth that's coming out of the stream as it's pumped up, it is just surface water after all, that was gonna get really expensive really quick. So if anybody wants the casing for uh, Atlas Filtry container, it'll be on the uh, curb come garbage day. I don't really have the most uh, crazy setup here, so it was easy to modify when I built it the first time. Then I said, okay, well maybe I'll get one of those three cartridge units, like a whole house unit. It would extend the duration, uh, have a silt filter, and then another filter, and then a, a, probably a carbon filter. Now we're getting crazy. It's just duck water. They're gonna poop it in two seconds anyway. Those turned out to be really expensive also. Like I would have just come out of here and ba 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 ba. And I looked on Amazon and some of them were like north of $400. Craziness. So what did I come up with? This is a $79 pool filter. Since COVID came out, a bunch of people put up a bunch of these uh, kind of soft-sided above ground pools. And the economy of scale being what it is, these things are cheap like bores. $79 with a pump and a filter. Sand filter is good enough for the New York City public water, which is arguably the best tap water in the world. So it's gonna be good enough for our birds. And because homesteading is just another PC way of saying prepping, it won't hurt to have 500 gallons of drinkable water sitting here. In order for things to make sense here and to work out, I went ahead and ordered some bulkhead fittings. These are like $6 a piece. They work smashingly, as you can see here. Uh, I bought some two inch ones when I connected the two tanks, same company. Uh, I don't know, I'll leave a link down below. I don't remember what they're called. Aussie group or something like that. Either way, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna punch a hole right down here in the, uh, in the tank. Kinda, this is flimsy, cheapy plastic. Kinda, I don't know, maybe protect it from 
five-year-old and an eight-year-old that might be running around so that they don't step on and break anything off. So what I'm gonna do is uh, punch a hole down here for the suction side. I'm gonna suck out. This is the tank that I pump into and then it cross feeds into this one. Uh, I'm gonna punch a hole into this one down here because there's a protective skirt on all four corners. Anyway, I just explained why I'm gonna do it. So let's go ahead and start punching. Beautiful. We're doing it on both sides? Yeah, eventually. Now this could be done by yourself, but it's always better to have a partner. It's like everything in life. And we're gonna try to fish this fitting through. You're on camera, keep your comments to yourself. Where is the camera? On the floor over there. You are not on camera. Oh, I'm in pajamas. Yeah, you're not on camera. No, uh, you drop it? no, I have it. Okay. Hang on. The yeah, hold the string. Okay. okay, go ahead and drop the fitting down. Keep the string tight in your hand. Ready? Yep. Figure out where the return should go. I don't know. Right about here. But will that have enough balls to push it up closer to the surface? See that I don't know. What do you got put it up here? I could. I have this one here to go longer. Put it through the top. Put it to the top. But then it's no. Good idea. Thanks for helping me work that out. Because yeah. as the tank level goes down, it'll just be shooting. <laughs> Keep it down here no matter what level the water. I usually don't let it get past 75 gallons okay. before I refill it. it. Right, it's unnecessarily splashing it. Okay. Good idea. So I'm gonna put this. No, I got it. Okay. All right, send it. These bulkhead fittings are fantastic. You don't even have to murder them as far as tightness goes, and that should be good enough. I don't wanna jinx it, but that should be good enough. Also, if you find yourself in the same DRM5 category as I am, where you're just insane enough to do this dumb stuff, Make sure if you're getting the bulkhead fitting, you get a thread thread because they go in backwards. So your initial inclination would be to get thread, female thread on the faceplate side, but you can't install them on a blind fitting like this, obviously. So if you get thread thread, you can thread your fitting in. Beautiful, who's better than you? If you get slip slip like this one is, uh, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So make sure that you get the uh, proper bulkhead for the application that you're doing. So we have the suction line hooked up over there, going in. Now we're at, uh, just fill this little thing up. The cool little thing here, Let's see if we can show you the cool thing on this uh, little filter here. Taking out the guesswork of what's half, which has been a constant struggle in my previous videos about, can't really see it, but right there it says max. So it takes the guesswork out of the fill level. So now we can put the top on, the multi-port on the top there, screw, get that all screwed in. And that's pretty much it for assembly. All right, so I got the multi-port on. Finishing up the last clamp. 
We're going clean water coming into the bottom, out of the pump over here, up into the multi-port, into the multi-port, down, cleaned, out, back into this tank right here. All right, let's uh, put the handle on. Cool, so that was really kind of easy. We got our suction in on that side, our return on that side. Filter's all plumbed up using the enclosed stuff. Listen, for $79, it's gonna be hard to beat this deal. So now the next part of the project, let's fill the tanks up. Welcome to Tickville. You guys haven't been down here since I believe the first video I ever filmed where we took down and took apart that tree over there. Uh, this is where I pump water from. We're about, oh, I don't know, two acres from the house and three acres from the tanks that we just left. Welcome. Uh, we're gonna use this one inch Harbor Freight pump. I know Mike Morgan just, uh, just found it and is espousing the virtues on his channel, but I can confidently say I've been using this thing for years and it rules. I have zero complaints about that pump. It just works. Now a couple things here. While this is a one inch discharge hose, I am not running one inch garden hose up to the tanks because of simply the cost of one inch hose. It's stupid expensive. So I run three quarter up, so I have the pump neck down to three quarters. Second, before I get any EPA, PETA, WIDA, water for the people for the ethical treatment of water, Maryland law says I could use up to 10,000 gallons of water a day for agricultural usage, not for drinking. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, I use 500 gallons every two weeks, so we're in good shape here. So. Save your outrage for somebody else. Oh yeah, where's the snakes at? Snakes and ticks, <clears throat> they're usually right in here. But this is their house and I don't mess with them and they don't mess with me. A little gigantic spider. Well, don't fall in. Just need a little bit of water to prime the pump. Actually, the pump has a check valve in the front. I don't need it to pump the, to prime the pump. I need it to prime this hose. So it does keep the water in the volute section from the last time I used it. But since the hose is drained out, we have a little bit of whatever this is, 10 feet ahead, it has to pull up. It can't pull the air out of there. So I just prime this suction hose up, regardless of the camera being here, it should start right up. I'm glad Mike Morgan found this thing. Because hopefully they'll get some sales or something out of it. Not that Harbor Freight needs sales, but to be honest, this thing does rule. This pump just runs and runs and runs. And I have zero complaints about it. So if you were ever wondering, can a pump like this, you know, pump a, a long distance? I could confidently say, yes, it can. The issue is the time. To fill 500 gallons, I'm going to say it probably takes every bit of two hours. It's not a tank of gas, I'll tell you that. It's probably half a tank of gas on here. I do have a two inch pump. I have a, two, a full two inch setup. The two issues I have with a two inch pump as opposed to this one inch pump, one, it tends to suck dry down here. This stream does run, but like I said, we haven't had water and we haven't had rain in a long, long time. So it's down about as low as I've ever seen it. And two, I don't have five to 600 feet of two inch discharge hose. I have a line on some fire hose, should work. I just haven't sealed the deal yet on it. But I don't mind. I don't mind this at all. Two poles, that's my guess. So about 500 gallons to go, ish. Should be a couple hours. I got other stuff to do. 
I'll bring you back for when we fire that thing up. All right, so this thing's been running for, I don't know, 24 hours or so. I told you I had stuff to do. And let's backwash it, see what we caught from the tanks. All right, look at that. We definitely caught stuff. All this junk that would have been going to the birds is now being caught. Fantastic. Now to wrap up, I wanted to go over a couple of things about water sanitation. According to the EPA, water that is potable, that is drinkable, should be about four parts per million. You go, well, what the hell does that mean? I don't know either. But you get yourself a handy little test strip set, something that you would get off of Amazon to do your, uh, to do your pool or spa, and you could test the water. Now I did this one a little while ago, but basically I am right at four parts per million. Four parts per million seems like a lot to me. Uh, most professional pool people will recommend you keep your swimming pool at three parts per million. And as you can imagine, the idea of drinking pool water isn't exactly the most enticing thing, but it would be safe. So to that point, if you were to use a setup like this in a SHTF situation, without going too much into the craziness zone, a little bit of liquid chlorine and circulating, taking the solids out, could give you some potable water in an emergency. Now, one final point about that. Chlorinating water is arguably the best way of doing it. There's no arguing over that. You could do hydrogen peroxide, but it would get pretty expensive at that point. That said, Things like Giardia and Cryptosporidium are not killed by just regularly chlorinating your water. Here we go into the craziness zone. If you were to store water in these tanks, filter and chlorinate it, you would want to boil this water before you drank it because getting Giardia in your system or Cryptosporidium, it's not what you're going to want to deal with when the bombs start falling. So boil the water if you are storing large amounts of water that you get from a surface stream or lake or pond. That's it, this one was easy. 80 bucks plus uh, $12 worth of fittings. And we have completely drinkable water for the birds, for irrigating, and in case something bad happens for the rest of us. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Bro, I'm working, don't do this. Don't, don't. I hate editing enough as it is. Don't do it. Stop. So I went ahead and put some gut. God damn it.